Welcome everyone, I'm Laura Shu, author of the Lightroom blog and Lightroom workshops on video at laurashu.com. In this video, I'll show you the new photo merge feature in Lightroom CC. This was added in version 2.2 in February 2019. It allows us to stitch together frames in a panorama, as well as to merge multiple exposures using HDR. Finally, you can combine the two using HDR Panorama, where you take multiple exposures of your panorama frames and then merge them and stitch them all in one step. We'll start with stitching together a panorama. I'll select the frames by clicking on the first and then shift clicking on the last. Now I can see that these are not in the correct order, but that doesn't matter. Lightroom will figure that out. I'll right click in one and I'll choose Photo Merge panorama merge. It takes a sec for Lightroom to build the preview here and then to refine it. Now we have three choices in terms of how Lightroom distorts the images to fit them together. I would click on each one and see which one looks best to you. Generally, if your scene wraps around you, then spherical or cylindrical will be best. And then if your scene isn't in front of you, particularly if there are lines that are supposed to be straight like buildings, then perspective will be best. There are then two ways to address the white areas. First, you can have Lightroom crop. Even if you choose this though, you can always undo the crop later while you're editing the result. The other option is boundary warp, where Lightroom distorts and fills in those white areas. You can warp it completely or you can warp it part way and then crop. I'll go ahead and use Boundary Warp for all of it. Now, before Lightroom stitches together your panorama, it applies a lens profile to correct lens issues to the source files. If it can't find the lens profile for your lens, you'll get a message here saying that it couldn't apply one. In that case, if you do work with lens profiles, cancel out of this, go to the Optics panel in the Edit Strip, and apply the appropriate lens profile to all of the source files and then rerun the panorama merge. I'll go ahead and merge this file. We see up here that it's performing the merge. Now that it's done, I have a stack of seven here. I'll click on this seven. We see the resulting panorama as well as the source frames all stacked together so that I can keep track of them. I'll click back on the seven to collapse that and I'll double click on the image so we can look at it larger. I'll open up the information panel to show you that the file name is the file name of the first source file with dash pano added. The dash two has been added because I've already done this once in Lightroom here. So it had to add a dash two to create a unique file. This is a DNG file. Now, because my source frames were JPEGs, the result is essentially a JPEG within a DNG container. However, if your source files are raw files, then this DNG file is still a raw file. You'll still enjoy all of the editing advantages of raw files. You won't, however, be able to run the new enhanced details process on this file because it's already been demosaicked. I won't get into that, but either run enhanced details first if you know that you want to be able to do this to potentially improve the quality of very fine detail in your images. Or at least don't delete your source raw files. In other words, the pieces of the panorama or your individual exposures when doing an HDR merge. If you want to be able to run enhanced details later, watch my video tutorial on enhanced details for more on this. One more thing I forgot to cover and that is whether editing that you may have done before stitching your panorama gets carried over to the panorama file. In fact, the editing from the first file you select gets applied to the panorama. So if I click in this image and then shift click in this one to select them all, it's the editing, or in this case the lack of editing, that gets applied to the panorama file. If I want the editing from a different frame to apply to the panorama, I just need to select it first. I paused this video and I edited this frame. So I'll select that one and then I'll hold down the control or command key and click in all of the additional frames to select them all. Now this editing will get carried over. 
Next, I'll be talking about merging multiple exposures with PhotoMerge HDR and then doing HDR panoramas. This editing rule also applies to them. Let's start looking at merging multiple exposures. I'll make the thumbnails a little bigger here. I took two exposures here so that I could get high quality detail in the shadows and also in the highlights. I'll select both of them and then I'll right click and go to Photo Merge HDR to merge them together. And here's the preview of the result. Now I always choose to auto align in case I wasn't using a tripod because of course I want the final images to line up. Auto settings simply does some basic editing to your photo to give you a good start. You can always undo this later when you're editing the resulting file. Now when you capture multiple exposures, it's possible that elements in the scene have moved between the shots. The clouds here could have moved, and if the wind's blowing, the bushes and weeds could have moved. Deghost corrects for that movement. If you use no deghosting and something has moved, then you'll see a ghosting of individual elements or two copies of them. Now unfortunately, this preview is not very large, so we can't zoom in far enough to see this. If you want to understand deghosting more, run the merge at multiple deghosting steps and compare the resulting files. Because I have experience with this file and I, I know where to look for the deghosting there, I'll increase this to low. If I click on Show Deghost Overlay, it shows me in red where it's detected that elements have moved between the two frames and where it's applying correction. The higher the deghosting level, the more aggressive it will be about finding and fixing deghosting. I suggest using as little as possible. Use enough to correct issues, but not too much. I'll uncheck this, and I'll click on Merge. Here's the resulting stack. I'll click on that. We have the resulting DNG file, and then the two source files here. I'll click back on the three. Just like with panoramas, the resulting file is a DNG raw file with the name of your first source file and then dash HDR. By the way, when you're photographing to merge multiple exposures, the Adobe experts suggest that it's usually better to just capture two or three frames with large differences in exposure rather than, for example, seven frames a third of a stop apart. Let's move on to my final example where I photographed two exposures for each frame in my panorama. I'll click on the first, hold the shift key down, and click on the last, and then I'll right click and choose Photo Merge, HDR Panorama Merge. This preview will take a little bit longer since it's merging exposures and stitching a panorama. I'll pause this video while it finishes. And here's my preview. Notice that we have the options here for the panorama stitching, but not for the HDR merging of multiple exposures. This process will automatically align the individual exposures and it will use no deghosting. If you see ghosting in your result and want deghosting applied, you'll need to do the HDR merges first and then stitch your panorama rather than doing it all in one step. I'll go ahead and apply boundary warp here and I'll click on Merge. And I'll pause this video while this completes. And here's the resulting file. Now, when you're capturing the source frames for your HDR panorama, it's really important that you capture the two or multiple exposures in the same order. So I've always captured bright one and then dark one, bright one and then dark one. You also need exactly the same exposure difference or increment in each of the panorama frames. If you've made a mistake on that, then just do the HDR merges before the panorama stitching. This concludes the lesson on Photo Merge Panorama and HDR. I'm really happy to see these added to Lightroom CC. If you've enjoyed this video and you're watching on YouTube, please show your support by subscribing to my YouTube channel. Also, go to my website and subscribe to my email newsletter to hear about my latest tutorials and articles and about Lightroom news as it breaks. I'm Laura Shue.